Alright guys, my name is Kyle Welcher. Thank you for clicking on this video. You know, this is another addition to my true series videos that a lot of people have been commenting that they love. They've been leaving a lot of comments, suggestions. Let me know what they want me to talk about next. If you have a comment or suggestion, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see a true series on. Basically what this series is, a lot of these professional anglers are sponsored by a lot of big companies. And that is absolutely not a problem. That is the goal. But Whatever you, what that comes with is maybe a recap video or talk about anything. They plug all their sponsors and they, de, you know, everything they call them on is something that their sponsors made, and that could be true in a lot of cases. But I don't have any of those sponsors, so everything that I use is actually what I have to buy, and it's what I actually believe is the best, you know, item for that scenario, the best tool for that application. So that's what I'm gonna show you today is the hooks, weights, tungstens, all that that I use, with the exception of Titan tungsten. I do get. You know, I am on the Titan Tungsten Pro Team, so I do use Titan Tungsten a lot. But other than that, these hooks and everything have to buy them myself. So this is the hardcore truth on my terminal tackle box. That's what this box is right here. You can see how I have it labeled in my boat. It says hooks. I know that my hook box has everything in it that I need. I also have some of these small high water creations tackle tags on it that say hooks and sinkers on both sides. And that's how my box are sitting straight up like this in my boat. And I can see right there it says hooks on it. So I always know which box I'm getting the first time. So let's start out right here. Let's start with the my favorite hook. If I could hook every single bass I ever catch on a straight shank hook, I believe I would land 99% of them. Unfortunately, that's not the case because anytime you get in really heavy cover from long distances, you get hung up a lot using a straight shank hook. But this is how I store my hooks also. But this is the straight shank section. So I take my hooks and I put them in these small little bags. So you can see right here in this one little, one little thing, there's a loose hook I had that I probably cut off and was retying. So right here in these little bags, I've got I don't know, six different styles of hooks all in this one little compartment, and you can see how they all fit right in there. I know these are all my straight shanks. So the normal hook that I flip with all the time, y'all see me flipping a little creature bait, see me flipping a big creature bait, whatever, with a half ounce weight. I keep it on the front deck at all times. Is a five volt Trocar TK130. That's the hook that I use all the time. I can fit like 15 of them in this little bag right here, probably more. I've got plenty more of all these hooks in my truck. I just keep about that many in my boat to get me through a couple days of fishing if I do break off a lot. Everybody knows the Trocar TK130. That's the five alt. I keep them in a three alt. And then from there, I go down to the smaller, more finesse worm straight shanks. So I've got some four alt cover shots. I've got some uh, three alt of the laser Trocar, of the, the laser easel claw, eagle claw straight shank hook that goes for a worm. It's a really good Cinco hook. I use it for a Cinco a lot. And I've got those in a five alt as well, same thing. And I've got some of the Gamakatsu G Finesse and the three alt, really, really good, you know, lighter wire flipping hook. I throw this thing a ton. It's really light wire, but for whatever reason, I seem to get a lot of bites on this thing and I don't lose a lot of fish. I'm flipping a Cinco, baby brush hog, anything like that. That's the hook I go for. These things are high, I think like $2 a piece, but I have really good results for with them. Except for on St. John's this year, I did lose a couple on this exact hook on a Cinco. But that's my straight shank hooks. And if y'all don't know what, what the uh, more finesse style worm hooks I was talking about, the straight shank style, these are a little bit bigger of almost a drop shot style worm hook. And you can take it and put like a little finesse worm on that with a with a like a lightweight eighth ounce head or something like that. You can put a Cinco on that and skip it around some docks, flip it a little bit, and I'm telling you hookups on this thing are ridiculous. They're awesome. They're better than an offset round bin. I've thrown this thing quite a bit and shouldn't be letting that secret out, but that's one I throw a lot and I don't lose a lot of fish on it. But that being said, uh, you know, offset round bin, regular worm hook lands a lot of fish as well. So that's how I store my hooks, store them in all those little bitty bags and I can fit so many, it's unbelievable. So now we go straight to the worm hooks that I have. Keep these in every single size from a three alt to a five alt. And you can see the, uh, I take these little bags and I will cut out from the actual hook packaging what it was. So there's actually no trocar hooks in this bag anymore, but this was trocar hooks at one point and it says trocar five all on it. I just took it and put, these are actually gamakatsu, light, thundering and lightning outside. These are actually just regular gamakatsu five all round bins. These are the kind I was throwing last week on follow or two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whenever it was on follow for the big worm and brush piles. That's my favorite big worm hook when you're in heavy cover. It's got a big gap over the hook eye. You can see right here between the eye of the hook and the tip and the tip of the hook, big huge gap. That fish got down his throat. That gap is so big, it's gonna you know hit him in the top of the mouth as soon as you set the hook. Now, I'm gonna show you why I don't use EWG hooks. I keep some in the boat at all times, big ones, just in case I ever find a scenario where I really, really need one. But for the most part, that doesn't come about very often at all. But if you'll take a look at this, this is a big super wire EWG. I think this is like a five volt, not 100% sure. You can see, 
you can see how on this EWG, the hook point is actually directly in line with the line tie. So the hook point here, I can literally rub this thing on my hand and I'm not gonna do anything but skin hook myself until I get to right there to the, you know, arch of my hand. I can rub this thing all across my hand and not and hardly get hooked. Whereas with this hook right here, I can't rub it at all without instantly digging in skin. So that one actually hurt. That's why I don't use EWGs on anything. Like really, I don't throw them at all, except for on a swim bait or something like that with a screw lock. I'll throw those style EWGs. But other than that, I do not throw this style EWG ever. Like I haven't thrown one in years. I literally try to avoid it at all costs just because the physics of it, it just makes sense that you're not gonna hook any fish down the throat. The hook is gonna have to literally come out the fish's mouth. It has to come out the fish's mouth, turn, and then hook them in the roof of the mouth because, you know, just the physics of it, it can't hook deeply down their throat without skin hooking them. Whereas this one can go in deep because it's got such a big gap. So I keep some of these in my boat at all times and I probably should stop because I literally do not throw them things at all. So I've got five volt round bins right here. I've got another bag just the same. Like you can see, I've got a Gamakatsu packaging in the back of this. Four alt round bins, and then I keep a six alt. This is actually a Trocar Pro V worm hook. Just something for a bigger worm. If I'm gonna throw like a mag old monster or something really, really big, I'll go up to a six alt, or even throwing like a, you know, anything like a huge lizard or something like that. Just keep a couple six alt in the boat. I actually only have two of these in the pack. As you can see right here, got some more in the truck, so I need to reload those. Good thing I did this. And I always try to keep them like a, the biggest ones out front, so 6 alt, 5 alt, 4 alt, so I just know how they're organized. And th these little bags, they do help a lot with relieving rust and, you know, keeping rust out of your box is a huge deal. It's a very difficult thing to do, but it's very worth it because your hooks don't, you know, get banged up in there because they're in the bags and they don't rust as bad. So, next up, got some 8 alt owner beast hooks. I keep some of these in here. Don't throw these very often either. And you can see how this one, I always tweak the hook point just a tad. You can see how this thing is kind of in line with the line tie right here. I tweak the hook point up just a little bit, throw this on a big swim bait or even like a, some kind of a giant frog or something like that. Big belly weighted hook, just a giant hook. You can throw it on a lot of different things. And uh, you know, it's just, this is just a hook where whenever a piece of plastic is too big to throw on any kind of standard hook, this is the hook you have to have. So I keep some of these at all times. And then let's see right here, I keep some of these BMC swim bait hooks. I've had these suckers for a long time. Still throw them every once in a while. For the most part, I throw a swim bait on a jig head or a little bit different style of swim bait hook. But you can see just a standard, bigger swim bait hook for, you know, I was throwing the five inch Kitek Easy Shiner on these for a while and still could. I just haven't been on that bite in a while, so I haven't used these. I actually have a couple of new packs of these in the truck that I probably should replace some of these with because some of these look a little bit old and banged up. And then right here, this is the hook I throw on my weightless horny toads and stuff like that. Anything that I'm reeling across the top of the surface, I'll even put like a big speed worm or something like that on these hooks and just reel, reel it over some sparse pad or something like that. And you can see how this hook, the reason I like this hook, as you can see between that line tie and this hook point, the hook point is actually angled down at the line tie. So if you take that hook point and bend it up just a hair, you've got a ton of clearance between the line tie and the hook point. So you, you really don't want to bend it much because you want the hook point to be kind of facing downward. So whenever you hook the fish, it pins everything to the roof of the fish's mouth. But I just have to bend it up just a little bit, just so I got a little bit more gap between that. But this is the reason I use this Berkeley uh, Fusion 4 alt from a horny toad is because it does already have a good gap. And like I said, I can still rub it a little, but it does definitely catch significantly more than the other one. And like I said, if you just bend that hook point up just a tad, you'll get way better hookups. You're not going to miss any. And like I said, whenever you get this hook in the fish, I don't lose very many at all. I do miss some occasionally, but that's just going to be the case with top water. For the most part, whenever I've got them hooked and I've reeled them two or three feet, I don't usually use, lose them. And like I said, that's the one I'll use for horny toads, big worms, stuff like that. For the most part, zoom horny toads, rib ribbit frogs, stuff like that. Another thing I keep in there is some spare, what are these things called? Screw locks. And I like the kind, the, the owner kind that has the little s centering pin. So that's what I put on all my screw locks that I use. So let's just drop right down now. So that's my top line. I keep all my bigger stuff in there. We're gonna drop down now to some of the more finessey stuff, some of the deeper water stuff. You can see right here, this is the wacky rig hook that I use. This is a size number one. These things are super cheap. You can get like 25 of them on Tackle Warehouse or wherever you order from for like $8. So 
I order a couple packs of these a year because I do break off a Wacker Rig a ton because I do not throw the weedless ones. And you can see this hook's a little bit small for something like a five inch Cinco. I wouldn't want to go any smaller. This is a size number one. I think a one all is actually the perfect size for better hookups. But in super pressured waters, I do feel like the smaller hook does get me a few more bites. So you can see right there, that is the Wacky Rig hook that I use. Keep those the same way in the small packet and the small little bag. I can organize a ton of them here. I also have some weedless Wacky Rig hooks, all kinds of different brands in there. And I also have some weighted and weedless Wacky Rig hooks right here. Don't throw the weighted ones hardly ever because if I'm gonna do that, I'll throw something like a shaky head or a Nico rig or something like that instead of the actual weighted head. Straight down from there, we'll go to the drop shots. Now we've got some tungsten in this thing. So you can look right here in this little, this little thing. Everything that I use for drop shotting is literally right here. I've got my smaller hooks for my four and a half inch robo worms. I've got bigger hooks for my six inch robo worms. And then I've got quarter ounce tungsten and I've got three eighths ounce tungsten. And that's about all I keep in my, in my tackle box for you know going around the country for the most part. I've got some bigger and lighter weight tungsten in the truck. I don't use that a ton. For the most part, I use a quarter or three eighths. And these are pretty much the two sizes of hooks that I use. So, and there are a couple different brands in here, but they're all the same size. But it's just a standard straight shank. You gotta rig the bait up on the hook and it's a little bit more weedless. I like the fish around cover, y'all know that. So I use the weedless style drop shot hooks. Got two different sizes for both size worms that I throw on a daily basis. And that's it. As far as drop shotting, I have everything I need for drop shotting in one tiny cubby hole because of the way I can, you know, load this stuff in here. I do need to refill my quarter ounce tungsten. I've only got three in there. I need to put about 10 more in there, but they'll still fit in there plenty. So let's see. I don't even know what this is. These are actually some custom made Nico rig weights. So I'll show you all these. They got a little bit rusted because they're not made with super quality metal inside, but you just slide this sucker right in the back of a Cinco. And then it's a, like a quarter ounce for ledge fishing with a Nico rig, rig. So you can see how this thing looks. It's got the little barb on the side. I haven't thrown this too much, but it does work. And I will be throwing it some I'm pretty soon. I'm pretty sure I've caught some on it, but I haven't thrown it a ton. I'm definitely going to have to start because this sucker is a sleeper. And that Nico rig catches them out deep. That's what it's for is deep Nico rigging. So let's go over here. Okay, so here's where I keep all my tungsten. It's pretty much in one little strip right here. I've got every single size. So in my first little box right here, I've got quarter ounce and eighth ounce. So you can see, I've got a bag full of eighth ounce. I got a bag full of quarter ounce. I just fold them up in these small little bags and put them side by side. And I can fit, I mean, three times that many in that one little cubby. And then right here, I've got my three eighths Titan. I've got some half ounce that's full of Titan, even though it does not say Titan on the back. That is what that is, is all Titan tungsten in there. Mixed in with some other brands, but for the most part, that's how I keep my tungsten. I can fit a ton in this one little thing. So that's like, I don't know how many is in there, 12 or 15 half ounce, and that's probably eight or 10, three eighths ounce. Got them in this one little cubby, and I mean, they don't bang around. They're gonna have the paint on them whenever I go to flip them, because that's what I like to do. Beside that, same deal. I got three eighths, I've got one ounce, and then behind that, I've got ounce and a quarter. Y'all know what tungsten looks like, so I'm not gonna keep on going on. Then on the other side, I've got one and a half ounce, which is my main one for punching thick vegetation, and I've got a couple two ounces in there, and that's about it. So let's go down to this small little cover right here. I do keep a ton of these because y'all know your boy likes to flip. So I keep a ton of these. These are untamed tackle bobber stops. Keep these suckers all in here at all times. And I use them on a daily basis because y'all know I like to flip. So that's the ones that I use as far as bobber stop goes. I've got some stuff in here for Carolina rigging, but you ain't gonna see me do that no time soon. I've got some beads, some swivels. I don't use that. I've got a I actually got some more beads and some nicer swivels in the truck. Don't even put it in the boat because I do not use it. Like I don't Carolina rig very often at all. Got a couple punch skirts in here and I've got some collars to make punch skirts. I haven't done that in a while because usually I'm trying to get bites. The punch skirt gets bigger bites, but a lot of times we're going a little bit pressured places and you know, I don't want to use the punch skirt too often unless it's really in the pre-spawn. Last but not least, so I'm gonna do this whole box relatively quickly. I've got all my shaky heads that I use right here in one cubby. Boom, that's a bunch of shaky heads that'll fit in that one little place in that box. So this right here is my deeper offshore ledge fishing. These are half ounce with a five alt hook, light wire five alt hooks. I'm gonna throw these on whenever it's a little bit tougher. You know, like if you're ledge fishing and you can't get on by a crankbait or something like that or a swim bait, it's time to drag a shaky head. So I'm gonna use a little bit lighter wire, five alt round bend hook in these, in these shaky heads. And I throw it out there with like a magnum trick worm on it. 17 pound fluorocarbon or something like that. And that's what I use for that big shaky head. I've got some smaller ones. I think this is, yeah, this is actually a Dirty Jigs 
you know, shake your head right here. I think these are 3 16 ounce. And then here's the ones I use the most. I've got some missile eighth ounce Warlock swim bait heads in here. I've got a couple different sizes. That's got a smaller hook on it. If I want to use a smaller worm, I'll go to that one. If I want to use a little bit bigger worm, just say like a zoom trick worm or something, I'll throw a hook about this big. If I want to throw like a uh, four or five inch finesse worm, I even throw like a four and a half inch robo worm on the back of a shaky head sometimes. I'll go a little bit smaller hook, something like this. You can see that's a little bit smaller hook for a four inch worm. That's what I'll use. So I, I break these up based on the size of the hook. See, that's a small little shaky head, small little hook for a small little worm. So the same size head, but I keep them in two or three different size hooks because I won't throw a different worm on them from time to time. So after that, I've got a bag that I keep in the boat and I throw these suckers very rarely, but I do throw them from time to time. And that is swing heads. You can see that right there. I've got a bag full of swing heads. Everybody knows what that is. This one's actually got the paint beat off of it. Throwing that thing on Kentucky Lake last year, I believe it was last year, and I caught some on that. Just a dang swing head, put a little speed crawl on the back, and reel that sucker around on some pea gravel or something like that. You'll get a, you'll get a bite or two, there's no doubt about that. And then, last but not least, I've got just a weird little hodgepodge of big, like, 5 alt round bend hooks. I'll take one of these out and show you. I think these are actually the spot remover that I've got. It's got a really big hook in it. So it's got like a, I mean, four or five alt hook, screw lock head, but it only weighs like three sixteenths or quarter of an ounce. I think these are actually a quarter. And uh, if you wanna put a bigger worm on there, like a big ultra valve speed crawl, or like a big, you know, zoom trick worm or something big, and you want to fall relatively slow, this is the shaky head I'll go for. So I keep a lot of different sizes. I mean, I keep a lot of the same sizes, but I keep a lot of different size hooks because you don't wanna put a hook this big in a four inch worm or you're not gonna have any action. And I feel like whenever it's super, super tough, and I fish for cruisers a lot with a shaky head. I don't want to use a big gaudy hook because I feel like it turns them cruisers off a little bit. So I want to make sure that I've got something that looks extremely natural and the fish are never going to shy away from it. Okay, from there, we've got our untamed tackle net heads. And I don't keep a ton of these. I do have, I'm actually missing the bag of these. I think they're actually in the boat right now because I was actually putting a little small swim bait on the back of them. But you can see right here, just the net heads. Y'all know if your boy is throwing something like that, I am not doing well in the tournament. So, little net head, small mouth killer, same thing. Keep these with a couple different size hooks, and I pretty much only keep these in. I got some quarters, net heads, for the most part, super lightweight, small little net heads for fishing, you know, a little net rig, a little bit tiny worm. You don't have to sink a big, giant worm. You only gotta sink a worm about this big, so you don't need too big of a head, you know, to keep the bottom contact. Now. Another thing that I keep as far as hooks, keep a little bag of trailer hooks. Not a big deal at all. Don't throw those very often because I don't throw a spinnerbait too often. But now the last cubby, and I've got so much stuff jammed in these and it's hard to believe, is my Untamed Tackle Scout swim bait heads. You can see I label them. These are 3 16ths of an ounce, and there it is right there. Let me show you what these look like. So y'all seen, y'all heard about it on the Lake You Follow video. This is one of my actual sponsors, even though that goes against the it's true series guidelines, but if you want to check out Untamed Tackle, the code is KW10. That's the 3 16 ounce Untamed Tackle Scout jig head. Not going to get them all out, but you can see right here, these are 3 8 Got it right up there in the top corners. And this right here is halves. You can see I've got a bag full of halves, bag full of 3 8 and a bag full of 3 16 So that's what I keep. And then I've got some custom poured ones right here that I'm actually trying to get Untamed Tackle to pour something very similar with a very small hook for very, very small swim baits. You can see this is actually a custom one. Hard to get your hands on these, so these have all been used. Really small hook for tiny little swim baits. Keep these in my boat at all times, because whenever it gets super tough, on all kinds of lakes, you can whip this sucker out, put a little bitty tiny swim bait on back, and bust them. So that's what I keep in my terminal tackle box. I really don't think I missed anything. I think I went through every single cubby hole in here, and that's what we got. So, as you can see, fishing all over the country. I use the same basic hooks. You know, I use a five alt round bend for a ton of things. I use a four alt round bend for a ton of things. I'm always flipping with a five alt. If I need to flip like a speed crawl, go down to a three alt, a Cinco, stuff like that. I've got everything covered in this one little box, but I do need to restock some of these things before we go and start catching them on something because I've only got three quarter out shake, uh, drop shot weights. Only got two six alt, you know, worm hooks. So really gotta make sure that I stock this up before I go back fishing. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. That's been another true series on Terminal Tackle. My name's Kyle Welcher. Thank you for watching. 
Leave me a comment. What do you want to hear about next? We'll see y'all next video.